get you through my morning every day. Every morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Adelaide, Jody and Hazy on Nova. Let's have a chit chat. Let's have a chit chat. It is so time for a chit chat. Let's go, girls. Yeah, for the uninitiated, this is where the girls get together and talk about all the stuff that we like to talk about in private, but your little ears flap around, don't they? I'll tell you what, they prick up. Yep. (laughs) They prick up mightily. Yes. Welcome back to Abby in the newsroom. Woo, for you. Away I'm for so week. happy to be back with the Sweetie Pies. Oh, <laughs> so back to, so happy to have you back to the Sweetie Pie Emporium. <laughs> mm. um, so, Abs, uh, single, not single after the last week? Do you want to know something funny? Yeah. Last week I was that bored. Yeah. I jumped back on the dating app. Oh, God. Excuse sure me very much, said the general. <laughs> 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 well, you know, you can have a few on the go. But anyway, yeah, so single for now. Okay. See what happens. All right. <laughs> what about you, Zoe? Single or very? Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not very single still. Okay. Still preparing for your hot girl summer. I am going to Europe for a hot girl summer. Yes, okay. Yeah, you are. yeah. The gym pods on, etc. All right. Let's talk about this. And uh, do you know what sparked this conversation? Maths. Good old maths. So maths last week. Jaden and Eden, our girl, South mm. Australian girl, mm. um, had a bit of an argument because he divulged some secrets when he was in an argument with someone else and said, "Eden told me." Ooh, mm. a bit of so, which is oh, classic cardinal sin. So, when you tell your partner something in confidence and then they blab it, mm-hmm. that's what we're talking about this week. Mm-hmm. So, I had a really unique situation in my old job when I worked at a different radio station. My husband worked upstairs, so he was basically in sales. I was downstairs doing my thing on air, but I would obviously tell him everything obviously, that yeah. was going on in my life. But then it was precarious because we would go to social situations where the people that were involved were there and I had told him everything and I'd, I would get so nervous mm. because I'd be like, babe, you cannot, you cannot say what I've told you to that particular person or anyone else in that environment and I never trusted that he would be smart enough to keep his yeah. mouth up. But yeah. also, Greg talks so quickly yes, that they probably wouldn't it, even yeah. miss it. Yeah, one hundred percent. Oh, so apparently you're having an affair. Oh, but yeah. Concussion. Right, we can look at the crows. Hang on, I'm still trying to register the first yeah. idea. What happened? There? Yeah, so I was fortunate in in that sense that no one could understand what he's saying anyway. Mm. Yeah, I remember being in a situation where I told a colleague um, for confidentiality purposes, let's call her Jody O. Yes. I, I said to her, no. um, "Here's a bit of a secret, but I don't want this getting out in TV circles. So just keep it." To yourself uh, and then it did get out and then I said what happened Joe and she said it's okay I just told my friend Tiff <laughs> to which I said well, guess what Tiff works <laughs> at Channel TV. 10 mm. and her husband at the time worked at Channel 9 yeah. um, so I, I yeah. don't know who else you could have told to spread the word greater so you genuinely no don't put this on me you oh, no, no. anyway yeah I, I messed up <laughs> <laughs> We got there in the end. You just learn from your mistakes sometimes. (laughs) But you do genuinely tell people things knowing that they will tell their partner. Mm. It's like, please don't tell anyone. But also in the back of my head, I'm like, I know you're going to tell. 100%. Uh, Lots of my my closest girlfriends are all in relationships. I don't tell them anything. I don't want their partners to know because they'll tell them. Yeah. Yeah. I used to do it with my ex as well. So I'm going to tell me something. I'll go, I will take this to the grave and also to my boyfriend's house. (laughs) It's just part of it, I think. I've never thought about it. But yeah, I'm the same. I'm obviously not in a relationship, but I tell my sisters everything. Right. So we will, you know, mum, even stuff with mum, something will happen and then she'll, you know, a month later and you go, oh, yeah, I told Tamara that ages ago. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I always have to tell somebody. I can't keep secrets in. Like they ne- they've got to, at least one person you've got to be able to go and talk to and tell. Note yeah. to self, don't tell Abby a secret. Yeah. No. <laughs> 13, 24, 10, let's do this this morning. When has your partner blabbed your secret? <laughs> Can we please do it? That, oh, gosh. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. Okay, when did your partner blab? Uh, well, it was a friend, um, and we're on our way out, and she blabbed to every male we met that I hadn't shaved down there for five days. (laughs) (laughs) So how many... So you went out together and she told everyone that little (laughs) nugget of information. Yeah. Yeah, so at what stage did that information come back? Uh, (laughs) I was with her when she was saying it. (laughs) So... Do you feel the need to sort of jump in and maybe say, hey, be, keep that information to yourself or do you add to the story? What happened there? I just, I just walked away. Oh, Kelly. 
That's good. You've taken care of it now, though, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Good. I had to work and I didn't have time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. How Thank very good you. was that? Oh, that's what it's all about, isn't mm. it? We're a very, very open, tight knit community here yes, at Nine Nine. Yeah, no and judgment. it goes no whatsoever. further. Whatever you tell us goes no further. Oh my God, Joe. So I was just speaking to Kelly before. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what you're waking up to, Adelaide. News. In the news today. Breaking news. Breaking news. What's in the news today? Your post snooze news. This is all the stuff you need to know today because it can be very, very overwhelming. Just scrolling through the internet going, oh, what's actually important? Let's go to Abby in the newsroom first up. What's up? Well, this one piqued my interest because we've all done it, but a bride is offering a $500 reward after losing her wedding dress right <gasps> here in Adelaide. So essentially, by the looks of it, hubby-to-be, or hubby, not quite sure, has left the brown delivery box um, on top of the car as they're driving and it's obviously fallen off. <laughs> Whoopsies. So wait, she was at the reception, she got changed? No, 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 no. So they'd gone to a um, Burton... Uh, What's it, what are they, you know, storage facility, and they've gone there to pick it up. So whether it, whether they've had their wedding yet, we're not quite sure yet. Oh. I don't have any more details. But they've picked it up, you, they've put it on the top of the car, oh, no. they've driven and realised, yep, yeah, it's yeah. not there anymore. It, so they were driving, um, over, it was along Main North Road. It's saying at Walkerville, which doesn't make sense because there is no Main North Road to Walkerville. So it, it was in the northern, northeast suburbs, though. Right. Okay. Sounds hard to do. I've left everything on top of the roof. Mm. Have you? Everything. I reckon at one stage I left myself up there. <laughs> I'm driving along, couldn't find myself. I was on the roof of my and own And then car. you got yourself out of the car and you went, where's Andrew? Let Fell me check off, the top ran of the over car. myself. <laughs> it is amazing, though, the amount of people who leave things on the car and it's still there. Um, producer Emily was telling us the story that she went all the way home and her wallet was still on top mm. of the car when she got there. So. We genuinely yeah. drove from Henley Beach to our place in St Peter's and my husband's mobile phone just still on top of the car. Oh. Yeah. Like Clinging for dear life. The yeah. mobile phone was up there. It's like, no, oh, no one can read what's inside me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hopefully uh, it, the delivery box was addressed to Lyndall Kane. So if you see it. Find it. Yeah. And yeah. she put here, Tom stupidly left the package on the roof oh, of the no. car. Bloody Tom. So blame Tom. She also, still want to marry him? Yeah. Mm. If you find, particularly if you're a bloke and maybe just sort of cruising along, you find a wedding dress on the side of the road. Yeah, don't don't get it out and start wearing it. No. <laughs> it's somebody else's, all right? Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, can I speak NBL, please? Yes. If you don't mind. Actually, absolutely <laughs> you can because this was epic. Okay, so this series has just got super, super juicy. Tasmania Jack Jumpers v. Melbourne. And, well, um, don't turn it into a promo. Oh, no. <laughs> So anyway, this this NBL series has just got juicy. Yeah, well, it has. <laughs> so it's one all, and then last night on the buzzer, Jack McVeigh nails a three from somewhere he definitely shouldn't have. McVeigh, two on the clock. Oh, oh no! Jack yeah. McVeigh, oh. simply incredible. Jack McVeigh with the shot of his life. <laughs> it was amazing. Unbelievable. Unfortunately, I couldn't see it because with KO now, if you're logged in on one device, which I was on the way back from Middleton, watching the Port game, and then I got home and tried to watch that game on my actual telly, and it's like, oh, so, so I couldn't. So you had to see a replay? Mm-hmm. Do you know what? Jack Jumpers, everyone's behind the Jack Jumpers. Yeah, we are. There's something about Melbourne United, which ah. is just not fun unless you're a genuine Melbourne United yeah, fan. Yeah, but also I love that you're jumping on Tassie now. Yeah, big time. Because you know we've what? had some real interesting feedback all last week about Tasmania. Oh, and yes. now that the Jack Jumpers are 2-1 in the series, you're all about them. Jack McVeigh. Jack <laughs> McVeigh. Oh, Go you're, the Jack Jumpers. You're Tell an me, interesting boy, little character, aren't you? Yeah, really like to really jump on board some of these things when they're just starting the fire. Because I thought the Melbourne United were going to clean them up. Oh, so did I. Quite easily. The first game, I was like, Ugh. But here we go. If they could win that as well, off the back of uh, the AFL announcement, Jeez, what a place Just to be, Tasmania. Tassie are up and about. Who saw that coming? Mm. Both of their heads. Oh! News. Newsy. <laughs> She's back, baby. <laughs> She's back. I did not miss that. Yeah. And the pile on and you siding with him. I yeah. didn't miss it. That's okay. <laughs> I did. Yeah, Kerry kind of kept quiet, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I just sort of ran it out. Um, yeah, mix 
mixed results for our footy teams on the weekend. Port, of course, won, but mm-hmm. unfortunately the Crows went down. Yep. What about the talking point on the weekend, which was the pitch invader on Friday night? Oh, my God. Did you see it live in the flesh? Yes, I did. And what was it like? What I was, was the like, reception like? No, it, well, because my vision isn't great, but I was like, genuinely, is that... I was like, look to my left, to my husband... Is that someone on the field? Yeah. And it definitely was. Like, so close to the ball, though, Hazy. Yeah. Oh, you got right there. Yeah. Interaction with some players as well. Matt Crouch tried to stop him at one stage, and then Keezy yeah. almost tackled him to the ground. 22-year-old from Blakeview, he's in all sorts of trouble. Oh, dear. So he's facing that magistrate's court on June 19. Uh, five grand fine is definitely coming his way. He's going to get a three-year ban as well from uh, Adelaide Oval and probably a little bit more when the AFL's done with him as well. That's yeah. purely just in-house. Okay. You wait till the AFL get hold of it. Right. Did you see that his, he got his mate to film it? Oh, no. So he got his mate from behind and he gets up and he walks through the crowd and then he takes the security guard's hat off and then he runs. But I just, I genuinely can't believe that a spectator can get that close to the play in this day and age. Mm. And also, that security guard has ruined it for everyone. Yeah. So all the security guards out there who are like, I'm going to work tonight and I'm just going to watch the footy. No, 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 no. You're watching the crowd from you now on. <laughs> yeah. You might have to do something. You might have to do something. You are turning around and you are facing the crowd the whole time. What about a quick story? Oh, we used to have security guards out at the Ponderosa, oh. particularly for night games. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> And I, remember, and I remember, I'm not, I'm not making this up as well. It was early on, so it would have been like so 2006, 2007. Yep. There was a bloke who was just wearing undies, um, and I, I'm not kidding. He had no arms, so he was an armless bloke in his undies with a backpack on, and he, <laughs> made, and he made his way from one side of the Ponderosa to the other mid-game, and security guards basically just escorted him, <laughs> escorted him through. It would have been like Central's v Port game. <laughs> And we all stopped by this bloke who was wearing a backpack. It could, it could have been chock a full of bombs. No arms. Went from one side, from the north end to the south end. And the security guards were almost cheering for him, letting him go through. <laughs> security level on that particular night, yep. not up to scratch. So, yeah, there you go. That's my story and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> 614. What about when your kids just drop one-liners and you're like, oh, my God, that was epic. Mm. So that happened the other morning. Um, so basically my mum's in town, so she's at home with the kids, and my husband had to drop me to work because my car had to be serviced. So basically he needed my car to drop it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, you get it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when he got home at 8 o'clock, he went into my four-year-old's bedroom and said, Hi, darling. Good morning. And those beautiful morning cuddles when they're so sleepy and they love you Open so much. Open and honest and refreshed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, he said, let's play a game of what have we done this morning? And she was like, mm-hmm. He said, I dropped your mum off at work. That was about 5 a.m. And then he said, then I went to the gym and did a workout on my big muscles. And then I dropped Peyton to volleyball at school because she has training early in the morning. And then he said, then I took the car to be serviced and I ran home and now I'm here. That's what I've done before 8am. And he goes to her, what have you done? And she goes, well, I just rolled over to listen to that story. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And then promptly fell back asleep. <laughs> she might as well have said thanks to that, you big hero. <laughs> I love that so much. I'm just like, well, I just woke up and listened to your crap story. <laughs> I just woke <laughs> Snore fest. <laughs> You're such a hero, Dad. Now that's a joke. That was a joke. That's a joke. A joke. That's a terrible joke. What a comeback. Uh, Newsreader, Abby. Can we... Oh. Uh, you know what? Standing O. Yes, she Yes. Does. <laughs> yep. Well done, Queen. Yep. Look at them. Okay. Hello. Just Hello. had yourself a little holiday. Yeah, I just had a I had a little holiday. I went to hospital and yes. then laid in bed for a week. Oh, yeah, so that was my holiday. It was great. Really highly recommend. Okay, can you apologize? <laughs> no, I was genuinely ill. Everyone knows I'm absolutely taking you know what. Because okay. that's what you do particularly in this space. It's the Monday morning joke off. You so like to true. go in different directions. You know that I would never miss the Monday morning joke off unless yeah. I was on my deathbed. And mm. let me tell you, I was she on was my on bloody deathbed, deathbed last week. <laughs> <laughs> she was not well. Anyway. Okay. All right. Who wants to go first? Do you know what? Um, me. It's between Jodes and Abby. And Abby calls the shots. Who's going first? Is it Jodes? Jody. Okay. okay. <laughs> Set the tone, Jodes. I'm nervous. Okay. All right. Mine is borderline lame. Okay. I'm just going to say that. But 
Why should you always knock before opening the fridge door? Oh, dear. In case there's a salad dressing. Oh, God. Ah! <laughs> That's a real dad joke, though. I know. Yeah, it's nice, isn't I it? know. It's okay. It's all right. Move on. Move on. Right. Um, okay, ready? Yep. Uh, what's the difference between light and hard? What? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm nervous, though. <laughs> Your face right now. What's the difference between light and hard? I can sleep with the light on. <laughs> That's actually not what I thought you were going with it. But well done. Well done. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, um, let's continue that sort of theme then. <laughs> actually, don't mind. Uh, mine's a little bit longer, but uh, bear with me. Yep. So a farmer buys a young rooster. As soon as he brings a bird onto the farm, it rushes and it has mummy-daddy times with 150 hens. What? Oh. The farmer's impressed thinking about all the eggs the hens would hatch. At lunch, the rooster, again has fun times with 150 hens, all of them again. The farmer gets a bit worried now. The next day, he finds the rooster having special cuddles with the ducks, the geese, and a parrot too, which is now scaring him. Later that day, he finds the rooster lying pale, half dead, with vultures circling over his head. The farmer says, you horny bastard, you deserve this. The rooster opens up one eye, points up and whispers, shh, don't shout, let them land. (laughs) (laughs) I don't get it. I don't care. He's planning on having special <laughs> mummy daddy times with the vultures as well, Judge. <laughs> so he's not half dead at all. It's all part of a cunning plan from the rooster. He's got a lot of love to give. Oh, <laughs> Jody, the your face your head, is though. just <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm not awake. I don't know. It's fine. That is funny now. <laughs> the weekend sports wrap with Tom Rand. <laughs> Oh, ride my pony indeed. Good morning to you, Tom Rand. <laughs> morning, Hazy Jodes. How are you? Big weekend of football. Should we start positive or negative first? Uh, Do you want to rip off the band aid? Do you want to start on a high? No, we start on a high, okay. shall we? Well, let's get into Port Adelaide yesterday. Travis Bokes, 350th. Um, things looked a little bit grim at half time. Mm. 11 points down, but 13 goals to six. In the second half, great response. Um, the forwards got going. Finlayson and Marshall, seven goals between them. Zach Butters, outstanding again. 34 Three. touches and a goal. Connor Rosie, 28 touches. Willem Drew stepped up in the absence of Jason Horn francis And a great result in Travis Bokes, 350. Two and zip to start the season. Yeah, Is Travis a real boy? I mean, he just seems unbelievably freakish. Doesn't he? Isn't yeah, he? 35 years of age yeah. and still going and, and playing good footy. Um, this is so important. They bank these wins early, isn't it? You know, Melbourne at home this week. If they can sort of be three and zip, maybe, you know, four, one, five, one to start the season, it just gives them so much more of a leg up on the competition and means perhaps later in the season they can start to look to rest players like Charlie Dixon and, and others heading into the finals, which they perhaps made a mistake with last season. Yeah, I thought the big uh, positive for me was Finlayson and Marshall. Yeah. Because Marshall, you probably have a, his licence to maybe four or five weeks to find himself because he had such an interrupted pre-season. Finlayson, it just sort of seemed like he was lacking confidence shooting a goal. Yeah. So he mm. just needed to kick goals. And he did that yesterday. And we know he knows how to get a hold of the ball and he's so valuable around the ground when he's in the ruck. So, happy days. Yeah. I think it's a really good result. And, and Melbourne this week, they look resurgent, but they can beat them. Um, Jason Horn francis is going to be a real watch. Hamstring niggle. That I know there's talk that he might play this week, but, I mean, you know him. He's better than me. I think it's got to be at least another week Jason off. Horn francis has a long threatened to call into this show, 13, yeah. 24, 10. Jason, if you are listening. <laughs> yes, on come on, Jace. From your house. <laughs> Into Alberton this morning. Give us a call 13 24 10. Let us know we how, you're love feeling, Jace. how the body is and if you're going to play this week. I, I've, I've said it for a while. He's the next Paddy Dangerfield. Yeah, he's a gun. He's, he's good. so good. Looking very, very good. Let's talk about the crowds. Go for it, Rennie. Oh, oh. goodness me. Um, called that game on Friday night. Boy, they were flat. And, and how many times have they been beaten by a sweeping halfback? It used to be Corey Enright that owned them. Tom Stewart yeah. just. Destroyed them. <laughs> what about you in the commentary as well when he's 152, by the way? What an absolute freak. Fewest games to five time All Australian. That's how good he is. But what about one of the commentary pieces was imagine if you said to the Geelong supporters after Corey Enright retired, don't worry, we'll find someone who does the same job, maybe even better, and he'll be a mature age player from the Geelong <laughs> Footy League. Yeah. And it, it is. It's, it's what it is. He just, I mean, Luke Pedler, who I love, I think he's such a good player, maybe the wrong matchup. To go with him, I mean, hindsight's there's beautiful. No, there's isn't no it? right matchup for Tom Stewart, and that's the He's problem. Clean up everyone, yeah, and that's it. And 
you know, unfortunately for Crows fans, um, this season of expectation and, you know, so much hype, zero and two, now facing Fremantle away from home, facing can, the very real prospect of Can they of actually three. dig themselves out of this little zero and two hole? Yeah, they can. Yeah, okay. they're good enough. They're definitely good enough. But I think, you know, one of the things that happens when you're the best at something in a key category is everyone looks at you and thinks, okay, how are we going to bring you down? They were the number one attack last season. Yep. And it's almost like everyone's gone to school and gone to town. What makes them work? Let's put pressure on the ball users. It sounds simple, right? And it is. Yeah. But but they're shutting them down. They're yeah. making it really hard. They had 24 inside 50s, the Crows, in the second quarter. That's world record pace and they kicked two goals. Yeah. Something's happening between that final kick and inside 50 and it's just not working at the moment. They can fix it, but they've got to fix it fast. There was one highlight of the night for me and that was Ben Key's shirt front on the guy that invaded the pitch. How good. Brilliant. I yep. mean, that guy, goodness, he gets goose of the week, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. He's going to get a five grand fine and probably not just three years being from Adelaide Oval. The AFL is going to make a statement on this as well. Yeah, and I think they probably should. Um, you know, it was – and it was in play. Like, the Crows as well, it, it was two goals in the margin. They are actually – it ended up being a ball up, which is the right call, but – they were out. He's not helping the Crows players. No. So, can anyway. you believe how close he got to the ball? It was it was scary. Like within five meters. And you guys all know how big the boys are. The AFL. I mean, if he runs into one of them, or yeah. they, you know, Keys was pretty gentle with him in the end. But you know, he could get seriously hurt out there or hurt someone else. Mm. Are you ready? Before we let you go, I'll just play this little bit of audio and watch uh, Jody <gasps> absolutely go off her face. <laughs> Jack McVay with the shot of his life. Jack McVay. I am not just excited because it's Jack McVay who used to play for the Adelaide 36ers. I'm excited because it's Tasmania. That was. Doing something on the NBL stage. Thank you. And we talked about it last week, the bit of bad blood between Melbourne United yes. and Tassie. Now Tassie are one Two game one. away. Oh. And they play at home Thursday night oh. against Melbourne. I, would, I think everyone that's not a Melbourne United fan... Wants Tassie to win. Oh, my God. It would be so good. Do you reckon my brother, who lives in Launceston, Tasmania, was up and about last night? (laughs) Oh, my God. He was on the text and it was late and I was asleep. But goodness me. I love it. I love it. You're you're going. It's good. The juices are flowing. I love it. That's what sport's all about. Go the Jackies. Tassie, Tassie, (laughs) Don't you jump on board. I love Tasmania. Don't you very dare. (laughs) Aye. All right, Randy, you know the drill. It's Monday morning. So you leave us with a really, really epic joke. What have you got this morning? All right, well, unfortunately, my dog accidentally swallowed a bunch of Scrabble tiles. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think this could spell disaster. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's as bad as we were gets. on such a high with the Tassie stuff. I just brought it right oh, no. back down. Oh, it's so sad. Now. And then, it, it, what about this? Thud. <laughs> back to earth. You've got to hit the ground some stage. Really appreciate your time, Pleasure. Sydney. Uh, Joe, there's a lot happening in the royal family, to say the least. Oh, my goodness. I think everyone was shocked over the weekend when Kate Middleton came out and said, I have cancer. Yeah. And a lot of people, um, I guess, had to retract what they'd previously said in the, in the previous couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of scurrilous rumours going around and, you know, everyone had to basically eat their words when yeah. Kate came out and said, this is a genuinely serious thing that I've got right now. It feels like it's uh, evolving in terms of information everything that comes out because yep. what can you trust these days? I'll tell you who you can trust. Yes. And that is, of course, Channel 7's Europe Bureau Chief. That is Hugh Whitfield. He joins us right now. G'day, Hugh. All the way from London. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Okay, so what's the reaction been like? Uh, well, look, I think um, Kate pretty much summed it up when she said that it, uh, it's all been a huge shock for her and William and her family. And I think that... Shock is shared by people right across the UK and indeed around the world. Back in January when Kate went into hospital, we were told that it was not cancer-related and it's pretty clear that Kate and William believed that to be the case at the time as well, that two-week hospital stay for abdominal surgery. The cancer only found in tests after uh, she was discharged from hospital and we believe it was on February 27 when Prince William pulled out of a memorial service for his godfather, King Constantine of Greece, that was going to be held at Windsor Castle. He pulled out with 45 minutes' notice. It's likely that that is the day that uh, Kate and William were told that Kate uh, had cancer. Uh, it, it was found during that hospital stay, and she's now undergoing a course of what's described as preventative chemotherapy, and that's in case there are 
any cancer cells remaining, usually, uh, that this preventative chemotherapy to kill that remaining cancer off is, is, is gone after. Hugh, I completely understand that as a mum, she wanted some time to be able to have her kids off from school, to be able to sit them down and explain what was going on. But you have to say that the PR team, her PR team, have completely butchered this because she's a mum sitting there dealing with this cancer diagnosis and having all these rumours swirling around about her husband having an affair and surely they should have knocked it on the head a little earlier. Yeah, look, I think it's a, she was in a difficult situation and I think there's a couple of aspects to kind of the social media storm and, and the criticism that the Royal Family's copped over the last couple of weeks because on the one hand, you've got, you know, just the absolute outrageous stuff that's been said on social media um, talking about, you know, is Kate missing? Is Kate dead? The state of their marriage? Is there someone else that William's been sleeping with? I mean, it, it's just completely insane and the US media really picked up that and ran with it. You know, you've got US chat show host like Stephen Colbert saying things about William and Kate that he wouldn't want said about his own family. And, yeah. and keep in mind, William and Kate, you know, they didn't sign up to be an actress in a movie. This is the job that William was born to. He doesn't really have a lot of choice. Uh, alongside that, though, was the, the, the edited photo for Mother's Day. And yeah. um, I don't... I don't actually think that we can excuse the edited photo still, despite the news about Kate, because it's... It, it, it was not. It was not a good thing to do from from a trust perspective. But yeah. Kate wanted to wait these two weeks between making the decision to do the video and releasing it to protect the kids more than anything else. Hugh, sometimes we uh, don't get a grasp of just how intense the coverage is over here until we see something that's happening over in England. So when I saw my phone first thing over the weekend, I saw this diagnosis. I, I was sort of hit for six. The people on the ground and the genuine royalists, which seems like it's so many people across the English population, how are they feeling? I'd almost feel like they'd still be in an incredible state of shock. Yeah, I think a huge amount of shock. Um, and, I mean, to be honest, like I was pretty shocked because we'd been told consistently that it wasn't cancer. Um, and so for it to come through, and I think for Kate to speak so kind of in such a normal way she wrote the message herself and and she kind of explained it really well i think almost as if she was explaining it to a family member she looked pretty vulnerable in the video message as well and i think that probably normalizes her more than anything else but genuine shock genuine concern and and i think particularly even if you're not a royalist or a a fan of the royals to see a mom who's got three young yeah. kids under the age of 10 who have, is having to tell their kids that she's got cancer and explain to little Prince Louis what that is and what oh. it might mean for his mom and what she might look like over the coming weeks. I mean, that's just stuff that people can unfortunately relate to because cancer is so insidious across uh, across society. We've had Blake Lively come out and also um, Kim Kardashian having to apologise for their behaviour <laughs> when all the speculation was going on and, and they piled on, a lot of people piled on. Do you think there's an, an enormous amount of regret for how people have behaved over the past couple of weeks given what's now transpired? Oh, look, I think the people with some red faces, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like you say, like Blake Lively said that she's mortified. And Ryan Reynolds, her husband, owns the football club at Wrexham, in Wales, that um, William visited a couple of weeks ago um, and pulled a pint at the pub around the corner. Now, yeah. clearly, you know, would he do that if he knew that Ryan's wife is basically had just like launching into this social media conspiracy on social media too like it's just it, it, it it's never a good look and and i think you know for a lot of people it, maybe it's a bit of a wake-up call that social media isn't like this parallel universe people see these things they read these things mm. and just because you say something on social media doesn't mean it's it, it's real or not real as well so i think you know a good reality check for a lot of people and in particular people like Blake lively and kim kardashian who have so many followers as well we appreciate your time, mate. Absolutely all over it. And no doubt we'll catch up with you on the news tonight at 6 on Channel 7. Uh, thanks for your time, mate. Good on you, guys. Cheers. Thanks, you. Joe, it's something that's really, really boggled my mind all these years. Oh, yeah. And that is, why do men stink so much worse than women? <laughs> It's a genuine thing, isn't it? Is it really? Well, I think it absolutely must be. And there's a study that has revealed, particularly for teenagers, yes. that boys stink so much worse than girls. Teenage boys smell. 
But Full you stop. But you haven't had a teenage boy. You've had a teenage girl. No, no, no. But I've smelt them. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Horrible. Um, researchers compared body odor samples from 18 teenagers, <laughs> aged between 14 and 18. Analysis revealed the chemical composition collected from teenagers contained high levels of of certain acids. Ew. So there you go. Some of the unique adjectives used to describe these acid odours included cheesy, <laughs> <laughs> fruity and dried plum-like, musty, coriander-like, fatty goat-like, wax-like and soapy and earthy grass and green bell pepper-like. <laughs> They're not the sort of spices that you want to associate with a musk, particularly coriander-like. Oh my in god! In particular, coriander-like. No oh, one likes delicious. coriander. No, it's horrible. No, it's awful. I sit there sometimes and I think, how can when I compare myself to my wife? Yeah. How can I turn into such a toxic wasteland when I eat certain <laughs> foods and she's completely fine? For example, <laughs> when I eat one slice of red onion, I you almost have to put one of those tents around my house and fumigate the entire street. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely horrible. Are you that bad? I'm that bad. What, what happens? I, I don't know. What I, happens when the onion is digested and, and it just comes out through your pores? Yeah, different route. Different yeah. route <laughs> out of my skin. But it never happens to my wife. In fact, I'll go as far as saying I, I've never, and this might shock you, I've never even known my wife to even go to the toilet. What do you mean? She's never gone to the toilet in front of me and she's never even passed wind in front of me. She's never- and she's been through three pregnancies as well. Oh, my God. Your wife has never farted. So is she? <laughs> is she a rarity, or are you are you are you tooting regularly in front of Greg? <laughs> well, he knows. He knows. Like as much as I might profess, oh, that was the kids. He knows. <laughs> so I just wondered. I, I actually wonder if it even happens. But then someone else suggested to me the other day that as soon as I leave and the kids are out of the house. Oh like, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> all, she is in the all kitchen. Bits are off. She's having the time of her life. <laughs> <laughs> so she quite physically drops the kids off at school and then makes an extra visit to drop the kids off at the pool. <laughs> and that commute takes about 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Which could also make sense as to why I'm getting these notifications from our doorbell, my doorbell camera. Says, oh, really? There's some sort of thunderstorm happening in your house. <laughs> I need to know if this is a thing, because otherwise I'm getting all the share of toxic gas and wasteland. That's not fair. <laughs> We're going back in time. Daisy's on this Daisy. In, in time. Monday, sexy Monday. That's right. You know the drill. Grab Monday, grab it by the you-know-what, and give it a nice, good, solid kiss right in the you-know-where. And I guarantee you, Monday will not be back. Okay. I'm going to take your word for that. Very nice and firm, John. Uh, Let's take a trip down memory lane for the 25th of March, 97, life after death. Second studio album by the Notorious B.I.G. is released. Okay. I don't know if it occupies your mind as much as mine, but I often sit there and be like, what if if all that stuff didn't happen between Big Into? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you can you sum it up in a not, nutshell? I know there's documentaries about it and everything. Oh, East v West. Mm. Um, oh, jeez, I, I couldn't even begin to tell you like who started or what was the, was the retaliation, all those types of things. Because I, I think it's still sort of almost ongoing, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Trying to solve exactly who did it. So it's a bit of good old fashioned gang war, is it? Pretty much. Okay. Genuine gangster rappers. 2005 US version of The Office starring Steve Carell and John Krasinski premieres. And that's the other age-old debate, isn't it? Which version of The Office do you prefer, British or American? Mm, British. British? British for me. Oh, I'm probably going to say American. Right? What? Steve Carell, he's a fantastic oh character. God. David Brent. He's as, as is David Brent, though. Oh, my goodness. It's a fun debate. I, can you remember that episode? And I don't know why it sticks in my brain. It's a bit like you with your biggie v two-pack war. Yeah. There's a there's a woman who's pregnant in the office and every time she gets up, she's like, no, oh, <laughs> and drops the person next to her absolutely insane. You've been there, haven't you? Oh, maybe. Been that, you've been that person. Maybe. <laughs> 2015, British musician Zayn Malik announces he's leaving the band One Direction. Oh, good Went call. Good call, Zayn. Thing. Well, no, Zayn had some good stuff. Zane. Pillow Talk. Yeah, one or two good songs. Yeah. No one's topped Harry, though. No one has. No one's song on March 25th, 1994. What a man by Salt and Pepper. What a mighty good man. Yeah. Oh.